I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, if you would please read the roll. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Campana? Here. Commissioner Frazier? Here. Commissioner Hill? Here. Commissioner Schlegel? Here. Commissioner Smith? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Reynolds? Here. Mayor Stonehouse? Here. Uh, that brings us to the uh, agenda for tonight. And uh, commissioners, I need a motion for approval of the agenda. Commissioner Campana? I would move that we accept the agenda as stated. Is there a second, uh, Commissioner Smith? Second. Any further comments? Any commissioner? None. Nope. Seeing none, all those commissioners in favor of the agenda, please indicate by saying yes. 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 Any opposed by no? Hearing none, it passes seven to zero. Uh, that brings us down to boards and committees. We have two new members to, uh, to welcome, and that would be uh, uh, Mr. Robert Height to the Presque Isle Park Advisory Committee and Mr. Cody Meyer to the Marquette Brownfield Redevelopment Authority. If uh, you two gentlemen can beat me at the podium, I would appreciate it. Thank you both for stepping up and uh, really helping Marquette. Uh, commissioners, we have an appointment tonight, and that would be for Mac uh, Luce uh, to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board for an unexpired term ending uh, 0129 of 22. Can I have a motion supporting that? Commissioner Smith? Move that we appoint Matt Luce to the Parks and Rec Advisory Board for an unexpired term ending 129 of 22. Uh, second, Commissioner Schlegel? I second the motion. Any further comments from any commissioner? I uh, just wanted to thank Matt for serving, and um, I do know him, and I think he will be a great addition to the team. Great. Uh, commissioner Schlegel, anything? All set. Thanks, Matt. Any other commissioner? Seeing none, all those commissioners in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed by no? Hearing none, it motion passes 7 to 0. Uh, that brings us down to public comment. Comments may not exceed three minutes per person. Please state your name and physical address when making public comments. Good evening. My name is Mary Sullivan, and my address is 54 Sandwood Drive in Marquette. I am on the board of the Women's Center and I appreciate the opportunity to address the City Commission on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Women's Center. With me also is our Finance Officer, Gail Rinaldi, and our Executive Director, Beth Cassidy, is on a brief medical leave. The Women's Center is located at 1310 South Front Street within a block that is zoned for commercial use. The property that is located to the immediate north of our building is for sale, and we are aware that its location may be considered by a purchaser to be an ideal location for adult use marijuana retail store. 
in principle, we are not opposed to adult use of marijuana stores. The voting majority in the state of Michigan legalized adult use marijuana in November 2018. The concern we have is location. The building at South Front Street is not our emergency shelter. As you know, our emergency shelter is Harbor House. But it is where we see clients and their families for domestic and sexual violence services, such as counseling, safety planning, legal advice, and supportive housing. In addition, we also have weekly group support meetings at this location for survivors of domestic and sexual violence and their families. We provide services to men and women, to adults and children. There are specific reasons why we are concerned about a marijuana retail store next to our building. Our clients have been traumatized by domestic and sexual assault, which makes them highly vulnerable to using drugs or alcohol for escape. We see a significant incidence of substance abuse in our clients, and we do not want to put them in any situation that may have a triggering effect on their behavior. Having an adult use marijuana retail store located right next to us may be that triggering effect for our clients or may even deter their visitation to the Women's Center. Environment plays a huge role in a person's ability to abstain from substance use. We would be, we want it, excuse me, and it is crucial that the Women's Center remain a safe place for our clients to visit. We would be equally concerned if this adjacent property was sold to a person wanting to use it as a retail liquor store. Ma'am, I must stop you at the three minute mark. We are request, may I have time, additional time? No. Okay, specifically we are requesting that we be considered a buffer zone Thank you. Anyone else, else to uh, address the commission? Hello and thank you. My name is Randy Arterby. Uh, my address is 1900 Lakewood Road. And I'm here just to, one, reserve some time if I can. Later, I was told that you could reserve time for after your discussion of the marijuana issue. There are a couple quick things I'd like to say, if I could. Um, we would like to come to town with the recreational marijuana, with the grow and provision center. Um, we are not interested in being close to this young lady's uh, women's center whatsoever. So ma'am, if we come to town and we, we get approved, we won't be close. Uh, along with, I don't know if you've read any of the latest rules, but there is some rules with the provision centers now that you do set up some sort of program to help people that have been affected by drugs in the past, which we do have an in-house plan for. But we would like you to consider um, Superior's Finest Organics. Uh, we will work with the city on whatever regulations you'd like. Uh, we do have a place and spot picked out we'd like to present. We have an engineered design building. Um, along with that, it will be all organic. There will be no fit footprint whatsoever on any chemicals. It won't be anything used. Um, we have a plan in place for every aspect of this and been working on it for some time. Um, so I just wanted to introduce myself and if I can save time for after your discussion, I would like to do so. so. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mary Rule. I live at 408 West Park Street here in Marquette. <coughs> I'm representing the Marquette Lions Club and I would like to ask for some time to be reserved because of item 10 that's on the agenda for today um, to talk about the changing of the name of the Lakeside Park. Thank you. Thank you.
Frank Javero, 350 East Ridge Marquette, to speak on item 711. These are my opinions. August 26th, I reported a factual incident at McCarty's Cove that spanned only three minutes involving two lifeguards. A woman followed me up to put me down based on her observations on a beach two miles away. She's welcome to commend the guards for their service, but the challenge another resident's comment was deemed inappropriate by this board several years ago. That's why I raised my hand in the audience. Sometime back, a man used this tactic, followed by my plea for him to compliment this board to his heart's content without alluding to opposing public comments. The situation declined when this board failed to heed the proactive warning. These members need to determine whether this is acceptable and if so, enforce the rule equally, which it has not. The three remarks against me had no bearing on the reported incident. Certainly I called the fire department off the record as suggested because the situation was potentially dire. It required immediate as well as public disclosure. Mr. Campana assumed I lied when I'd have no incentive to do so. If I'm ever found to purposely lie, I'll never speak here again. The record shows I did not bash our lifeguards but reported an incident. There's no way to lie about that knowing anyone can scroll through those comments in any given minute. Those guards would risk their lives for me, even if they heard my report. They guard our beach well the vast majority of the time. Our fire department is equally dear to us. In fact, I wore their fundraising shirt to that meeting. To accuse me of trash talking either is ludicrous. Yet Mr. Campana bastardized my comment for his own benefit, similarly to August 12th, regarding the manager's failure to stripe a busy east-west crosswalk at Front and Ridge. He said my remarks had nothing to do with the manager, but didn't explain why or what he found funny about my mention of the chance of someone being run down at an intersection that's used to access our library. He used the familiar tactic of responding with statements that everyone agrees with, such as lifeguarding is a difficult job and they're well-trained. We know that. He neglected to explain why he feels I criticized them when they didn't deserve it. How could he know? He wasn't there, nor did he address any specifics of my report. As a former lifeguard, he knows the hardest part of that job is watching the water at all times. A person can drown in three minutes. He writ me for trying to avert a disaster as he did on the manager's failure to stripe a crosswalk more than a year after being notified. Odd how our last two meetings were my toughest, all because I reported two safety concerns. It's hard to sit quietly while members manipulate public comment for their political benefit. Responding with points we agree on is a known sleaze tactic. I implore the people to interpret our comments as delivered, what, what, not what members imply afterward. Their need to devise clever responses seems more important than being struck by a car or drowning in Lake Superior. Anyone else for public comment? Mr. Sullivan, um, I erred by not uh, 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 suggesting to you that you could have additional time by reserving time. So if you'd like to continue to talk or continue to present the rest of your case, you can do that as item 11 when it comes up for discussion. If you would care to, again, take your opportunity at that point. So again, my fault for not, uh, not catching that and certainly for the Mayor Pro Tem for pointing out the obvious mistake I had made. So little bit. Uh, there is no further public comment. Public comment is closed. That leads us to the presentation, which is the guardian of the quarter. And uh, Jim, if you would meet me up at the podium, I think. We do have a, a official certificate from the city of Marquette recognizing the tremendous work you're doing over at the Children's Museum <coughs> in making sure he does his job. So <laughs> that, and in addition, our mayor pro tem has always been concerned that he <laughs> sleeves with a very fancy donut and does eat donuts. Cup cupcake, and there's a second one there for your brother. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. I think Lexi is born great. 
And uh, thank you, Mum and Dad, for letting us have her for a while. She brings in her lunch, sets it in the kitchen, sets about fixing the museum, fixing the animals at the museum, giving them their lunch. But she has the best laugh of anybody that comes to the museum. And the highlight for me was, did she win the fishing award at the state park, uh, the uh, pocket park at the state fair? Uh, did she win the shooting award amongst all the volunteers we took down to the state fair? I'm not sure. But to see her showing turtles and snakes and tortoises at the state fair was wonderful. She's had a wonderful summer, and I think she's achieved greatness, but I think there's more greatness to come for this young lady. She's entering fifth grade, and I think we've got a long way to go. She'll do it. She'll be wonderful. Thank you all very much. That brings us to a public hearing, item number four, and that will be the Physical Year 2020 Budget and General Appropriations Act. Uh, clerk, if you can read the background, please. Thank you, sir. The City Commission held budget hearings on August 14, 19, 21, and 28th of 2019. Tonight, a public hearing is scheduled to receive public comment on the proposed Fiscal Year 2020 budget. Following this input, the Commission should consider any changes it wishes to make to the budget. Fiscal effect, a balanced budget has been presented. Recommendation, adopt the Fiscal Year 2020 Budget and General Appropriations Act. Alternatives, as determined by the Commission. I will uh, now open the public hearing. Public hearing is open. Anyone wishing to comment on the item in question, please do so now. Public hearing is open. Anyone wishing to comment on the item in question, the public hearing on the 2020 budget, this is your opportunity. Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Um, commissioners, um, a motion to proceed, I think, would be in order. Commissioner Campana. I'd like to make the motion to adopt the fiscal year 2020 budget and general appropriations act. Is there a second? Commissioner Schlegel. Second the motion. Commissioner Campana, further comments? Uh, just so that everybody knows, this is always a lengthy process for both the staff and the commissioners. And um, we normally have four to five meetings, sometimes three. Uh, two to three hours long, but it's you know a very important part of what we do probably the most important part of our um, <clears throat> Why we are elected uh, It is a balanced budget. We don't have any layoffs or cuts and um, Again, this is all due to the credit of our various departments um, And probably this is most notable because we've lost our biggest taxpayer at the Prescott Isle Power Plan. So we're very happy with the budget this year, and uh, it's a balanced budget, it's a good budget. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Schlegel. I'll just piggyback on that a little bit. Um, you know, the meetings are long and stuff, but that's really part of the job, right? Uh, <clears throat> I just can't tell you how nice it is to work with the people that we've got throughout our uh, departments at the city. It's one of the only times that we get a chance to sit down with them and really just kind of you know hash it out and, and get to know them and I feel kind of bad because I'm not gonna lie I'll, I'll pass them in the grocery store and wish I could remember names but I can't do that all the time uh, but I can tell you that this process as we go through it is one of those things that um, is, is crucial to, to how we run things and I'd like to applaud the the uh, departments and the city manager and the uh, CFO for the hard work that's been put into this process and uh, I look forward believe it or not I look forward to the next time thank you a any other commissioners commissioner um, and yeah as my first time going through this I really appreciate the hard work and the, um, the li weeks and weeks literally of time that gets that goes into um, Ranking projects, understanding what they're being, what's being proposed, and um, how we can continue to offer the services, uh, the wide range of services that we do offer in the city of Marquette. 
And I just want to raise folks' awareness that what's also happening in Lansing is, imp is, in, is impacting what we're able to do. Um, and in particular, we've um, not been able to, re we've not, cities in Michigan have not received m funds that were originally supposed to go to us thanks to what's happening in Lansing. So things are very tight and we, they folks did a good job of, we, we've lost the taxpayer with the coal plant shutting down, but there's also other monies that have were owed to us that have not come to us. And I think it's important for folks to realize just how tight our budgets are. And in my entire adult lifetime, we've done nothing but cut government budgets. And I think that time now, I'm over 50 years old, and <laughs> maybe it's time to start investing in our communities again. And, um, and I think we do a, a, good, a good job here in Marquette. We can question some of the priorities. But the, the fact that government is there to serve the people, provide our roads, provide our security, fire safety, and the amenity amenities that we have is very important. And I hope that in the coming years, we continue to be able to find ways to invest in our community really well. So thanks again to all the folks and staff who um, prepared the all this did all this work for us. Thank you. Any other commissioner? Seeing none, and before I call the vote, let me just indicate that uh, our staff has done a remarkable job. The departments be able to put together that budget package to present it to the commission in a coherent and understandable fashion, and to walk us through it so we're able to understand, really comprehend how all of the pieces come together and the end result in running the city and doing that with the idea of what's best for the citizen foremost is remarkable. And I, I really commend them for their ability to do that and certainly the city manager acting as a ringmaster and leader to make sure that all of that happens the way it has to. Um, commissioners, are you ready to vote? Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry, this is a roll call, yes. Um, please, uh, clerk, conduct the roll call. I swear. Commissioner Campana? Yes. Commissioner Frazier? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Schlegel? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Reynolds? Yes. Mayor Stonehouse? Yes. Uh, motion passes 7 0. Commissioners, that brings us down to the consent agenda. Uh, I will need a motion to uh, handle that. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem? I move that the consent agenda be approved. Is there a second? Um, Commissioner Campana? I would second that. Mayor Pro Tem, any further comments? No. Nope. Commissioner Campana? None. Any other commissioners? <coughs> Seeing none, all those voting in favor of the motion indicate by saying yes. 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 Any opposed? By no. <coughs> Hearing none, motion passes seven to zero. Item number six is the Lake Superior Urban Stormwater Wetland Restoration Project. Uh, clerk, if you would please read the background. Thank you, sir. The City of Marquette, in partnership with the Superior Watershed Partnership, received funding from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative for Urban Watershed Management. The goal of the project is to reduce impacts to Lake Superior water quality and public beaches by redirecting between 7.5 million and 9.1 million gallons per year of stormwater into newly created and restored wetland habitat. During the past two years, city staff, along with the Superior Watershed Partnership, have been working with the U.S. EPA in finalizing the scope of the work, design, and bid documents. A total construction budget of $450,000 was estimated for the projects. This includes a non-federal match source for both projects, $20,000 in time and cash, from the City of Marquette and $85,000 in cash from the adjacent landowner, Islander Beach and Tennis Club. The project consists of two components and was advertised for bids August 5, 2019. Project descriptions, one, the urban stormwater portion of the project, Coleman Engineering Design Documents, will direct water flow from the existing drain, Holly Street Drain, north under Holly Street to a new drain into the proposed wetland system. The work will involve traffic management, open cut excavation, management of existing utilities and installation of the new culverts and ancillary work. Two, the wetland restoration portion of the project, GEI design documents, will construct a new drain north into the existing wetland and construction of new wetlands adjacent to the existing wetland areas. The new drain will be excavated into the existing uplands and subsoils. 
The new wetlands will include a mixture of functional wetland types that will provide habitat for wildlife and migratory birds, as well as increased nature-based recreational opportunities for the public. Bids were opened August 28, 2019, with five bids received. The city staff, along with GEI consultants, reviewed the bids. All bids received came in over budget, with BACO construction as the lowest at a lump sum base bid of $580,965.35. Fiscal effect, project cost of $450,000 will be reimbursed through the Superior Watershed Partnership being grant eligible <coughs> with the balance of $130,965.35 being paid for from the Water, Sewer, and Stormwater Utility Fund. Recommendation, award a contract to BACO Construction in the amount of $580,965.35 at the unit prices bid and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the contract. Alternatives as determined by the commission. Commissioners, we do have three subject matter experts in the audience that if you have any questions, we can certainly call on. Uh, one would be George from GEI Engineering. We have Kurt Goodman here from the city, and we have Jerry from the uh, Watershed uh, Foundation, the actual grant writer. So we have experts available if you have any questions regarding it. Um, commissioners, what is your pleasure? Commissioner Hill. Yeah, so my questions are, uh, Sorry, I have to. Just for the rules for discussion. <coughs> Pardon? Motion to suspend the rules for discussion. You need the motion to suspend oh. the rules. Okay, I move that we suspend the rules so that we may discuss. Is there a second? We have a second. All those commissioners second. in favor of suspending the rules will signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed? No. Hearing none, motion passes 7 0. Now go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, the questions I had regarded. Um, the, the bids that came in were quite, uh, one bid was, t uh, were, uh, there's a 500,000, roughly $500,000 bid, a million dollar bid, and three bids at 800,000. And I, I wanted to understand how we felt comfortable taking a bid that was half of what another bid was, it was one question I had. Um, another question I had is, the contract says the work's gonna be done between se now and September through the end of the year. And I wondered if something came up, um, and we, thinking of the weather or some other rain event or something, um, what would happen and how would the, if things, if costs go up again, how would that be covered? And, um, and what is the, um, the, you know, um, is this designed for a 100-year storm event, a 500-year storm event? How, how are we gonna deal with what could be a, an enormous pulse of water that comes through with storms getting bigger and bigger? Those are my three questions. I don't have those all memorized, but I'll, I can kind of give a background to some of it here. Um, as far as- Did you introduce yourself? Oh, sir, George Meister with GEI uh, Consultants. Thank um, you. Lead engineer for the wetland portion of the project. So um, as far as the bids, Reviewing the, the prices that BACO had submitted on there, the unit prices were all in line with what we'd expect to see for a competitive bid. The other prices that the other contractors submitted, I think one of the things we're looking at is the time of year. It's late in the season. It was a it's a crunch project to get in at the end of the year, and the prices weren't the lowest you'd get as if, if you were bidding in the winter time or for a springtime project. So that's one of the big parts. A lot of people have work. Not really the best time to try to put a project in at the end of the season. I did talk to um, the representative with BACO who had submitted the bid afterwards to make sure they were comfortable with it. They said they'd gone back, reviewed all their prices, the scope and everything that was going on and they were comfortable with it. So the there was a big difference between the bids but I think it has more to do with who was looking to fill some work yet this year and, and maybe who wasn't. So um, try to see the other one I remember was um, regarding the volume of water. So the culvert part, I can't really speak to. Um, Coleman Engineering did design for the road crossing portion for the, the culverts and, and the vaults there. I'm not sure what they use for design parameters on that. The, for the wetland portion, we took the property that was available and maximized every square foot we could get out of it. So what we know is that there is, there has been a problem down in the past that's been improved and that what we're doing now is gonna add a significant additional capacity. Um, we didn't go through an exercise of finding exactly which storm it, it goes to because there was no opportunity to go any bigger 
anyway. The, the groundwater is at a level where we're basically coming down to the ground the groundwater level and opening up to the within the full um, property limits that we have. So um, we've maximized everything we can there. The, the project will take that storm water that currently goes east off Holly Street, divert it north up through this wetland channel to the Dead River, and we're also opening up some larger wetland areas that we can kind of route <coughs> it through and, and uh, push it into to help give it a chance to clean it and really remove some of that contaminant and uh, first flush type things out of there. So uh, other questions? Um, I'm actually, um, the third question, well, the, um, well, how did it come to be that, that we had to have the timing where we're bidding for something at the end of the year? And what happens if it goes over, something comes up and we can't finish it by December 31st as proposed, how would further or overages be covered? That might be a better question for Gary or for <laughs> myself. Thank you. Well, that's not an option. We're going to get it done. <laughs> Um, that's one thing about Baca. We did have some pretty good discussions with them. Um, that's maybe why some of the prices were, were a little bit higher. Um, <laughs> they, they've had to put some more resources into it. Um, if something, worst case scenario, let's say we do get an early, early storm, um, we will reach out to the uh, grant, um, grant people and say this is really unforeseen. Um, the good thing is all the main uh, equipment like the culvert, the lead time, they can get um, ordered right away. Um, if they need to uh, apply the resources to get bring in more people to get the job done, um, I and and, and I, I do think it's definitely doable. And I think the main work is in the <laughs> culvert for the Holly Street disruption. That's where the traffic control plan is going to be very very important. Um, so it's going to be phased in. So. Um, um, I'm very confident we will get it done. And um, can you, just a high level, what happened to delay the project for three years? Is there any? Um, actually, this project really, like a lot of projects we work with Spear Watershed Partnership, is um, we, we plan like six, seven years ago. Um, the planning for this type of project came uh, when we were doing some, uh, um, quite a, uh, we enhanced our beach monitoring uh, um, sampling program. We, we, uh, we discovered that, especially during rain events, we were getting high levels of E. coli. Um, one of the spots was the Lake Lee Arena, so we, we got funding for that project. And then also um, this project, and also with the investment uh, Michelle Butler did with Clark's Park, we thought it was uh, a huge, it was, it was important to uh, do our part to uh, um, definitely, uh, you know, look at the water quality. And I think this is a good fix. and. Uh, Great Lakes Restoration Initiative really liked the idea. <coughs> so this is a Great Lakes Restoration Correct. investment plan. So, yep. so your tax dollars at work. Yes. You federal federal <laughs> tax. This is the, yeah. and, the and federal tax. Know, it, this it, is federal money that we're bringing to Marquette that's correct. making correct. a difference. Yep. Thank you. Commissioners, any other questions or discussion? Commissioner Campana. Kurt, could you come back, please? I waited until you sat down. <laughs> I have two questions, Your Honor. Uh, as far as if it doesn't get done in time, if they accept the bid, isn't it on them to get it done? I mean, it shouldn't be our concern. Yes, we do have a, a we, December 31st is when the end of the grant. Um, we do have liquidated damages uh, in the contract. Um, but it definitely, there is a contractual with uh, Baco that uh, if approved, um, it will be signed tonight. So there is a contract that it, it has to be done by the first December 31st. So would the city have to kick in more money if they have to work another month, two months? I don't. If, if I could just uh, jump in here, it's Article Four of the contract. It's a time of completion clause. There's a penalty of $900 a day if Baco doesn't finish it by oh. that date. Okay. It's Thank pretty you. standard language in these contracts. Thank you. Question two. <laughs> um, oh. 131,000 is a lot of money coming out of the uh, stormwater fund. That must be the reserve fund, correct? Yeah. Um, I mean, is that, is that a big hit for you guys? I mean. Well, actually, there's three different funds. Um, there's water utility, three. Um, sewer portion, and then stormwater. So it's, um, 
uh, probably stormwater carries a little bit more cost. And we'll know the exact cost after we, after the project's completed and the per unit um, is calculated. We only per pay for what is actually done on the project. So we are hoping to save some money during the construction period too. Good, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Schlegel. Since you're here, Kurt, are these four <laughs> people, are they invited to bid this? Or is it an open bid? Are you? Were these people invited to bid? Oh, we, we advertise it through all the builders' exchanges. Okay. Um, you know, it's standard practice of the city, especially for a project this type. Um, I had a, pre, a mandatory pre-bid meeting, and we had uh, six uh, very good contractors um, attended the, the pre-bid meeting mm -hmm. where we went over the scope. We, we really had some good discussions about expectations and everything. Um, you know, so, and again, all the contractors, you know, you know they put a, put a sure. bid in. Well, I appreciate that, because I'm just trying to clarify for you, um, in, in certain instances in the industry, if you're invited to bid, which is not the case here, but I'm just trying to give you an example, yeah. you're gonna put a number in even if you're too busy to do the job, because you, you don't wanna not be invited back again, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's often times this, in, inflated number that comes in way above and beyond things so that they don't get left out of the game in the future, let's say. And I'm not saying that this is exactly what happened here, but it is something that happens in the industry, which is why you're seeing such a differentiation between Thank those you. two. Thank you. Commissioner Frazier. You can sit down, Kurt. I'll leave you alone. You can sit, just don't go too far, though. I, I agree with Commissioner Slago on I mean, it's open to everybody. I saw the list, all the people, bet, all the local countries bet them all about supporting local contractors. I know a lot of them, they do a great job. Bob goes out of town, but they, whenever they come to town, they usually bid lower in local contractors. It's just what they do. They miss up, they all their equipment's here, they've done many jobs around town, and all those other, usually contractors are looking for something to do in late fall, or early winter, but there's so much t stuff going on in town this year that a lot of them are busy. So maybe they bid high because they didn't want to do it. You know, if they're looking for work, they would bid low. But sometimes they contractors bid high because they don't have time to do the work. So glad they got somebody to do it, and they're trying to get it done for the end of the winter. It's good. Commissioners, any other comments? Seeing none, is there a motion to uh, to move the issue? Uh, yeah, I. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Sure. I move that we I I move that we award a contract to Baco Construction the amount of five hundred eighty eighty thousand dollars nine hundred nine five hundred eighty thousand nine hundred sixty five dollars and thirty five cents at the unit prices bid and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign into the contract. Is there a second? Uh, Commissioner Frazier. Second. Any further comments? Uh, no, I'm glad we're getting this done and I appreciate the questions from the other commissioners. Commissioner Frazier. I hope it gets done on time. Any other commissioner comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed by no. Uh, motion passes 7-0. That brings us down to item seven, the public participation plan. And uh, Mr. Clerk, if you would please read the agenda item. Mark. Thank you, sir. <laughs> In accordance with the adopted 2018 to 20 strategic plan, the community development director has worked with various other city departments and the downtown development authority toward achieving certification as a redevelopment ready community through the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. As part of the certification, the city must draft a public participation plan. The attached public participation plan has been reviewed by the MEDC and meets their requirements for the redevelopment ready community certification. Fiscal effect, none. Recommendation, adopt the public participation plan as presented. Alternatives, as determined by the commission. Mr. Verto, you wish to uh, comment? Frank Jeff Verto, these are my opinions. Thank you for entertaining this important item tonight. This gives us hope that our public participation opportunities will improve. Page four reads, public participation goals and objectives. The city shall support and encourage continuous improvement in the methods used to meet the public need for information and involvement. 
The municipality is committed to seek new and innovative ways to engage and keep the public involved throughout the process, end quote. Very encouraging. See, I've said something positive. The trouble is I lived in Missouri, the show me state. Some of the wording that follows is of concern, quote, public participation history. The city has an extensive history with ongoing public participation in community planning. The city has demonstrated a commitment to public participation and the importance of those contributions to the planning process, end quote. Based on my 21 years of involvement, this has not been the case, with too many examples to so much as list in three minutes. This so-called demonstrated commitment has declined over the years, the lowest point being lately. The effectivity of our participation has been based on who's who instead of the validity of what's said. We've heard a plethora of unrelated participants accuse this board of not listening. The document goes on to read, public feedback. In order to serve the city better, we require feedback slash input regarding how the citizens would like us to communicate information, end quote. Thank you for acknowledging that you can better serve us. However, we're not required to provide input. Desire is a more suitable word than require. But so long as we're required, my response is this. Please institute measures to communicate objectively by addressing our specific concerns without zeroing in only on the portion of our comments that you can finagle clever responses around. Valid concerns deserve discussion rather than subjective responses that run us in circles meeting after meeting. It would also help if the chair would face the participants instead of writing unrelated notes so often. Continuing from the document, quote, the city manager and staff are well attuned to the view of city residents and are able to recognize issues that will prompt heightened discussion. This is grossly untrue. Better put, they may be attuned, but they ignore us depending upon who's who on that particular item. That wording needs change. These points will continue to be raised until the desired improvements are realized. To answer the question how to better serve our public, please assure that every citizen concern that applies to our city receives an objective and thorough response based on the specifics presented. Stop wasting our time and yours by dancing around those specifics for your own political benefit. Commissioners, what is your pleasure? Commissioner Frazier? I make a motion to adopt the public participation. Let me suspend that request. Are we, we the, let them speak first. Are we doing a presentation? If you do the presentation, then, we'll, then I'll approve it. Please go ahead. Do your, do your wheel and deal. It's okay. Thank you, Mayor and City Commission. This is the other city departments right here. <laughs> Sean, Sean was a great help on putting together these documents. And uh, I'm Dennis Stackwitz, Community Development Director. We're going to do a very short presentation on the next two, this agenda item and the one after it, and that's the Economic Development Plan and Public Participation Plan. Um, many people know, some may not, we are seeking accreditation and certification in the Redevelopment Ready Communities Program um, through the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. What this program is, is it lets someone know who's coming to Marquette that we are fair, predictable, have an open public process, have plans, and we have staff and methods to make everything successful in their development and for entrepreneurs and so on and so forth. <coughs> it really, it's a, it's a means for us to do uh, business attraction, retention, offer superior customer service through our departments, outlining the uh, approval process for people and making it transparent, predictable, and efficient, and efficient. Along with that, we plan for our own new investment and reinvestment. Such things would be like our capital improvement program that we, um, you'll be seeing in the next month, actually a six-year update to that as well. The, lost the screen. That's okay, I can wing it without the screen. Without the screen, people actually have to listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> um, no secret here, the economic development plan is actually a city charter requirement. Um, it's found in section 13.6 of the charter and, and basically says that we're going to have an economic development plan. There are 
The economic development plan, when you get to it, there are five big goals that stand out. Improve and diversify the tax base, increase and diversify the employment base, support local businesses and encourage their growth, improve the city's relationship with those local businesses and be responsive to their needs, and improve quality of life for all citizens. The public participation plan, which is what you are, have before you now for consideration, it's basically it outlines how elected officials, appointed officials, and the boards and commissions would engage the public throughout the planning and development process. Um, <coughs> I tend to believe the quoted section of that plan is relatively accurate, seeing that we've won some awards for our public planning processes that we've done. Most recently, the Third Street Corridor. Um, we found some very unique ways to go out and do that. And with Sean's help and the help of the MEDC, we've also found ways to add on that. And again, these are all tools for accountability and transparency in government. And that is pretty much the end of our show. <laughs> Told you I'd keep it really, really short. But I can't thank Sean enough. He was a great help in doing this. All of the, you know, both of the plans that you're seeing tonight, they've been reviewed by the MEDC and they meet all their requirements and it was not easy. Got sent back quite a few times. So <laughs> we're going to go back over to the side table and Okay. <laughs> Any questions, commissioners? So in terms of, um, I think it's important for folks to know the other, the part of the reason to be redevelopment ready is it makes us eligible for partnership funding potentially. And if you could elaborate on that. And then oh. um, I believe we're the only, we, we'd be the only the second community or there's only, there's, it's, we're ahead of the curve on this. And could you speak, or last, when we talked about this at a work session, I believe, and if you could speak on that, please. Sure, I, I'd be happy to do that, Commissioner. Um, as far as redevelopment ready communities in the Upper Peninsula, there's only one other one, that's Escanaba. As far as I'm aware of, we would be, I believe, number two to do that. Um, as far as funding commitments, when the state pushes unfunded mandates, so we like to call them, they generally, um, you don't have to be a mind reader to see what's coming. And they've been pushing this redevelopment ready community um, certification for the better part of two years now. And the way that they're ramping it up, um, it leads us to believe, and I've also had side conversations with folks that I can't name here, but we do know that in the future, if you're not RRC certified, you're gonna be down on the bottom of the list when it comes to certain funding opportunities. I would, is there, would you characterize the state's feedback um, positive or negative in any particular way or? Um, Incredibly positive. Yeah. The, their RRC uh, office is generally made up of uh, planners and they're planners that have worked in the field before, have worked for local units of government or private sector planners and they have um, a lot of hands-on experience across the state and they've been very helpful. And, and then my last question. Um, I have noted here with the commission and in um, just personally around town, we do seem to have a fair number of empty big storefronts right now or big commercial properties. Can you speak to how this might impact that generally or is that well, the, the redevelopment ready community designation is going to help um, let people know when they are looking at the empty storefronts that we'd have. And we do have two significant ones. The Marquette Mall and the Shopco site are pretty significant. Um, when site selection people go through their process and identify these properties in Marquette, one of the things they're going to look at is the development process with the city. And that, that entire development process isn't just the zoning and planning department or the engineering department. It includes um, the 
Brownfield Redevelopment Finance Authority if it could be a potential brownfield site. It also deals with the history of the City Commission and decisions they make and whether or not they endorse things such as the Redevelopment Ready Community. So having that endorsement is a very positive signal to anyone that would be looking to redevelop in those properties that the City of Marquette is ready to be not only a receiver but also a partner on any project. Thank you very much. Any other questions, commissioners? Seeing none, commissioner, what is your pleasure? Oh, <laughs> commissioner Frazier, now. I can adopt it. All right, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the public participation plan as presented. Is there a second? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Second. Commissioner Frazier, for the comments. Thanks for all your hard work and let's look forward to getting it done. Mayor Pro Tem. Nothing further. Any other commissioner comments? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying yes. 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 Any opposed <coughs> by no. Hearing none, motion passes seven to zero. That brings us down to item eight, which is the economic development plan. Mr. Clerk, if you would please read the uh, agenda item. Thank you, sir. In accordance with the adopted 2018-20 strategic plan, the Community Development Director has worked with various other city departments and the Downtown Development Authority toward achieving certification as a redevelopment ready community through the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. As a requirement for achieving certification, the city needed to bolster the previous economic development strategy into an adopted economic development plan. The attached draft economic development plan has been reviewed by the MEDC and meets their requirements for redevelopment ready community certification as well as satisfies the city charter requirement for an adopted plan. Fiscal effect none, recommendation, adopt the economic development plan as presented, alternatives as determined by the commission. Mr. Stankiewicz. Uh, thank you, your honor. I don't really have a lot to add on this one um, other than we have gone through a lot of different iterations of economic development plan since the previous uh, administration. At one point in time, we had a two-page white paper and then it's morphed into uh, various drafts. This one here is by far the best one that we've uh, put together yet. Again, all city departments, Sean over here did a great job of, uh, of putting that together. And it takes a very, very, uh, a very good look at all of the external partners that we have but it, it also doesn't commit us to having to pick one or the other to work with it. It's kind of like a 30,000 foot down view that helps us look at our opportunities, um, potential partnerships that we may have and how we go about doing that and accomplishing the goals of our community master plan and the RRC program without committing ourselves to one particular strategy or partner. Commissioners, any questions? Mr. Schlegel. I'd like to uh, make a recommendation to adopt the economic development plan as presented. Is there a second, Commissioner Frazier? Second. Uh, Commissioner Schlegel, further? Yeah, I, this is one I've been waiting for for a while and I'm really excited and thankful that it's been accomplished uh, with many years on the Planning Commission. This was something that the Planning Commission was aching to see and um, staff and, and these other committees have really been pounding them out over the last few years with the Master Plan Revision, Land Development Code Revision, Parks and Rec Division, Redivi or, uh, um, Revision, and a number of um, just really old, poorly written, out of date documents that the city just has been banging out uh, as time's gone on. And this is just, uh, this one here was kind of uh, the last one on my radar from, from years serving on that advisory committee and I just wanna thank you and staff and, and Sean for, uh, for doing a really nice job with this, thank you. Any other, uh, Commissioner Hill. Um, yeah, and thank you, Paul. I, uh, this is really, um, I encourage the public to take a look at this. It's actually short and sweet and is, as I said, a, a good 30,000 foot view of, of potential work and the plans that have been done. It's, 
it's a it's a well done look at across different art, that's arts and culture. There's the capital improvement, which is roads and sewers. There's um, parks and rec in here. All those pieces come together. The downtown development authority. Um, so uh, well done. And um, my question is, um, when could we anticipate the annual review? Do you, can you just uh, put think, putting that out on the radar? When would that be a year from now, 18 months from now? We will, uh, we anticipate doing an annual review of the economic development plan that would be consistent with our capital improvements and community master plan. All of those have scheduled, uh, our program schedule dates in there for review. Um, we try to match those together because they're all intertwined. And, and one thing that happens in one of those plans may affect another plan and so on and so forth. So and we typically start that process uh, right around February, March every year. Thank you. Any other comments? I would thank you for work well done. We, um, we certainly have needed it for some time. I think it's extraordinarily representative of the city and really does capitalize on what opportunities we do have. And I would just caution everybody because we have an economic development plan does not mean that you suddenly economically develop. All the city can ever do is set the table. We can put the China down, the silverware down, the right places. We can try and make it amenable and welcoming to developers and the opportunities, but we can't make that happen. Uh, that said, uh, everyone voting, everyone in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 Anyone opposed by no? Uh, hearing none, motion passes 7-0. That brings us down to item nine, resolution authorizing 2019 capital improvement bonds. Mr. Clerk. Thank you, sir. In order to continue the process of issuing capital improvement bonds for fiscal year 2019 projects, a resolution must be approved that will authorize the sale of the bonds. A notice of intent resolution was approved on July 29th, 2019. Projects proposed to be financed with this bond issue are attached. These are projects that have been included in the fiscal year 2019 budget as approved. Fiscal effect debt service schedules will be produced upon closing, currently scheduled for November 12th, 2019. Recommendation, approve a resolution to authorize fiscal year 2019 capital improvement bonds and authorize the city clerk to sign the resolution. Alternatives as determined by the commission. Commissioners, what is your pleasure? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. I move that we approve a resolution to authorize fiscal year 2019 capital improvement bonds and authorize the city clerk to sign the resolution. Is there a second? Commissioner Campana. I would second that. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, further comments? This is just something we do every year. It's routine, so no real comments. Mr. Campana. Just part of the process that we have to do now. Any other commissioners? Hearing none, this will be a roll call vote. Commissioner Campana? Yes. Commissioner Frazier? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Schlegel? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. <coughs> Mayor Pro Tem Reynolds? Yes. And Mayor Stonehouse? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Uh, item number 10 is renaming Lakeside Park. And uh, Mr. Clerk, if you'd please read the background. Thank you, sir. The Marquette Lions Club requests that the City Commission consider renaming Lakeside Park the Marquette Lions Lakeside Park. The City Commission Policy 2005-01, Naming Parks and Recreation Facilities, outlines guidelines for naming <coughs> parks. The Lions qualify under Section 2, Item 5-2, uh, an individual or group who has made exceptional contributions to the City of Marquette by providing direct and significant volunteer services benefiting the public as a local or community leader. The Marquette Lions have volunteered to maintain Lakeside Park since 1982, removing limbs, maintaining the park benches and wooden structures, and updating the information display cases. The policy requires support from the community be provided to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Uh, PRAB was provided the attached letters of support at their August 19th, 2019 regular meeting and voted unanimously to recommend the City Commission support the renaming effort. Of special note is that the Marquette Lions will be celebrating their 100-year anniversary in October of 2019. 
<coughs> their first meeting was held at Lakeside Park in October of 1919. Fiscal effect, none with this action. For recommendation, approve the Marquette Lions initiative to rename Lakeside Park as Marquette Lions Lakeside Park. Alternatives as determined by the commission. Ladies. Uh, we believe that was a pretty clear statement of what our request is. Our anniversary is an exciting time for Marquette community because Marquette Lions Club has been our chief support for the community for 100 years. Mm -hmm. And we would really appreciate the uh, renaming of the park to Marquette Lions Lakeside Park. Anything further? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Commissioners, what is your pleasure? Mr. Campana. I would like to make the motion that we approve the Marquette Lions Initiative to rename Lakeside Park as Marquette Lions Lakeside Park. Is there a second, Commissioner Smith? Second. Uh, Commissioner Campana, further comments? I would think that, you know, since the Lions Club is very active and forever keeping this place cared for and open, that uh, it should be named after them. Mm -hmm. We should be happy that they take it upon themselves to do this. It's a good community service. Uh, it's a small little park on the south side, but, you know, it's, if they open it up and, care, it's, and it's in balance with Father Marquette, this will be a nice area of town. So I, I would be all for this, Your Honor. Commissioner Smith. Thank you for all you have done and continue to do. Congratulations on 100 years. Any other comments from other commissioners? Seeing none, uh, I can only add my commendation to it. it was, it's a great group. Uh, you cannot say enough good things about the Lions, particularly the Marquette Lions. And certainly in this instance, they have sweat equity into that park. And I think we certainly need to recognize that as a city and bid them all good fortune. Uh, commissioners, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying yes. 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 Any opposed by no. Hearing none, it is unanimous, seven to zero. Good luck. Thank you so much. And thank you. Uh, this brings us down to item 11, which is the marijuana ordinance discussion. Uh, Mr. Clerk, if you'd read the background, please. I don't have any background, sir. There is no background. Right. We do have a number of folks that have reserved some time to speak. Uh, I would ask um, in the order that they asked uh, uh, Mr. Araby to come up. I probably slaughtered that completely, but. That's there, Jack. It's Randy Arbaty. Uh, my family's been in the area for many years. Um, Give credit to my father for the businesses he's been involved in. I don't know if any of you have known him in the past, but we had the Honda Yamaha motorcycle snowmobiles in Sands for years. Moved it to town, ended up with Pal Nissan Honda Suzu before Riverside. Anyway, a little background. Um, I just wanted to say a few things. I don't know what your determination is or what your plans are, but again, we would, um, we're not some big company coming to town. We have a group of local people that are going to put our lives and dedicate it to this. Uh, we have a, a thing we're looking at doing that it will make this secure as a casino. I keep saying secure as a casino and clean as a surgical room. But we have a lot of factors involved, uh, safety factors, smell factors, clean air factors, water factors. We've taken all that into consideration in our plan and we just ask that you would Please consider us to come to Marquette. Um, and if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer at any time. Thank you. Mr. Verado. Thank you, Jeff Verito. These are my opinions. No cover sheet appeared for this item, again causing a citizen to search blindly for a page that wasn't there. It threw off this chairman as well. You've been asked to include a cover sheet for each item, even if it's only for discussion. Any information will help direct us on which angle to comment from. This board is thanked for its open-mindedness regarding marijuana, although it's probably all about the money. 
I intended to attend last Wednesday's work session, but I work and have a life aside from this commission, believe it or not. A summary of the work session needed to be included in the packet to help us prepare up-to-date comments. It's fitting this item would appear on our agenda the Monday after Beer Fest. Only lately has government opened up to the fact that marijuana, as it's referred to on city documents, is less dangerous than alcohol and cigarettes. Don't take me wrong, I love a good dark beer, even if I do get blasted on one pint. My college buddies would laugh at me. While most of us aren't well attuned to what's happened in Lansing since last November, the shortage of information online is concerning. You'd think this was the first state to legalize marijuana when there's so much information from other states to go on what works and what doesn't work. I've driven hundreds of miles through those states and spent many weeks there without so much as seeing an accident or any misbehavior attributable to marijuana. The cops seem to love legalization as much as the rest of us. The commission is accused of no wrongdoing on this matter, but as a state, let's get going. We ought to opt in as soon as our attorney can prepare a list of cautions so entrepreneurs don't risk losing their investments. We can account for the items that are apparently stymieing our legislators in Lansing. We do need to exercise caution with edibles, however. Delay edibles for consideration at a later time. Listen to people like the woman from the Women's Center. There are plenty of location options that shouldn't bother anyone. A great attribute of marijuana is that its use can reduce alcohol consumption. In fact, it saved a friend's life. Users exhibit much better controlled behavior and creativity than is possible by getting drunk. Maybe next year we'll have a weed fest. The attendees will leave in an upright position. Mr. Sullivan, I believe you uh, have some things to still say to us. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. Again, our issue is not um, legality of uh, marijuana. That has already been decided. Our issue is location. And our concern is for the care and welfare of our clients. So to get to the point, <laughs> schools and daycare facilities in the city are in buffer zones, which prevents adult use marijuana retail stores location close to their site. We want the city commission to consider in its planning that the women's center location on South Front Street be in a buffer zone. We also recommend that the city commission take into consideration applying these buffer zones to areas that are zoned commercial, but other social service agencies operate there, such as the Great Lakes Recovery Center. Uh, thank you again for the additional time. Thank you. Uh, commissioners, before we, we begin, um, if I can ask the attorney just to uh, reiterate for us the process we're going through. In other words, we have this ordinance, then we'll have a follow-on ordinance that will be coming through the Land Development Code that would begin to really address, I think, many of the buffer zone issues that we might have, have concerns with. So if you could, could walk us through that so everybody understands. Thank you, Your Honor. If I could just back up for a minute. Uh, on Wednesday, last Wednesday, we had a work session. And at that time, we presented to the commission with a draft ordinance uh, with one major um, uh, part of the ordinance that we didn't have an answer for. And that's really the purpose of tonight's uh, discussion, I believe. But after that work session, we've actually revised our draft and we I don't have it in front of me to talk about it tonight but we took some of the comments of the Commission in into account uh, for example the draft ordinance called it a recreation um, marijuana ordinance we're gonna call it adult use so we're gonna make some little changes like that um, or there's a definitional change we made it's not important um, but Really what we wanted to do tonight, after, and, and we'll get that to you, and our, our plan is to, once we have a final draft, that will be attached to the notice of scheduling the work session for the last uh, meeting in September. Um, but the purpose really of tonight then was to, uh, as far as this ordinance goes, uh, to determine the types of establishments that the commission wants to have in Marquette and then a number of, of those establishments. Um, as the mayor said, the, uh, the land development code is going to be uh, amended to uh, provide some zoning regulations with respect to this uh, 
new law and uh, that is going to track about the same time as this ordinance and based on the schedule that we've set it would be ready for adoption I think towards the end of uh, October whereas this ordinance could probably be adopted on the first uh, meeting in October if, if that's what the Commission decides to do and both ordinances would then become effective uh, December 31st I, I guess to just to back up I think the Planning Commission zoning ordinance change would be effective at a meeting on December 16 because that meeting is the meeting at which this Commission will approve those changes the Planning Commission will have done its job the City Commission will adopt those zoning changes on the 16th of December and then we have to wait 10 days for it to become effective so we either use the 26th or the 31st maybe I can't recall what day it was but it's it's 10 days later at least so that's kind of the the program is what we're going to try to follow and I know that Sean has done a brief PowerPoint to show you and the audience the uh, the document that we want to work off of tonight that you've seen um, okay so our intention is not actually to pass an ordinance tonight correct our intention is simply to come up with the numbers of establishments that would be contained within that ordinance correct and then we will put that ordinance in final form right and we'll attach it to the notice public hearing that will be for the next meeting I think that was very important that we all understand where we're going and what the roadmap is uh, mr. hop are you ready you may go okay this this is a recommendation from the management side of the city um, what we did here in the ordinance and it's, it's it's this is part of the ordinance it shows all of the types of establishments that are allowed by this new law and then the number of each establishment is in um, you'll see that to the to the right of the type of establishment those are numbers that were uh, that uh, management put together based on looking at other cities at least one of which was a very similar size to Marquette's I understand that zoning the zoning uh, department uh, community development has also has taken a look at this uh, this management recommendation and may have some other numbers to talk about but that's what we did um, so you'll see for example the class A marijuana grower the number that was recommended was five and uh, and so on so forth as you go down some are a range some are no limit and um, I think self-explanatory you want to show the next slide Sean? this sh uh, slide shows the allowable zoning and school buffer map and maybe someone from zoning can explain this I don't really um, fully understand it but let me just say uh, based on what zoning told us uh, in our proposed ordinance our draft ordinance we had um, set the distance as at 500 feet from a school instead of a thousand which you're allowed to do under the new law and we were told because if we set it at a thousand there wouldn't be any room for a marijuana establishment if that has changed I'd like to hear it I know that zoning's taken a closer look at it and maybe they have some additional comments so maybe Dennis do you have something you'd like to say this map right here the basically the areas that are shaded brown are the zoning districts that would be permitted to have facilities uh, underneath the emergency rules that were adopted by the state of Michigan in other words they are either of a uh, industrial light industrial or commercial related enough to be able to support with conditions created um, most of the facilities that are in the emergency rules the pink areas on the map are the 500 foot buffer on the schools and that was the number that we had used 
uh, from the ordinance. Questions about the map? So it you sure help? I may. Um, so there were certain classes of licenses that were limited to industrial, and but then there are classes of licenses that are not limited to industrial and I think could be anywhere in the white. Is that correct? That's what I don't understand right now. No, based upon our research from the emergency rules, those, all of those areas that are identified in the brown area could support all of the most of the facilities listed. The ones in the black crosshatch are the ones that would be the more intense industrial facilities. There, most of the white areas are residential uses, like 99% of them. So there, there would be no licenses allowed in the white area? Is that what that means? Correct. Was any attempt made to also come up with a buffer zone around um, churches? When we did this analysis on Friday real quick, we were just operating based off, off the draft ordinance that we were given. So we only went from 1,000 feet or 500 feet from, okay. the, from the schools. Does the commission have or the city have the authority to do that around churches? Absolutely. Or other religious related property. Okay. Thank you. I have a question. I w I'm confused because I thought micro businesses could be allowed in homes. Did I? No. 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 Okay. No, so all right. Then. All. Okay. No. But a micro business is vertically owned. Just if you could just run through that for me, please, because that's the th other thing I found confusing. Um, if you look at the requirements for a micro business, they have to abide by all the requirements of each of the separate types of licenses that apply to it. Um, so that's retailer, uh, processor, and grower. And since a grower is mandated to be in an industrial area, a micro business would have to be in an industrial area. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner's thoughts, Mr. Campana. I want to go back to the Women's Center. Is there any way that the city could feel sorry for them and exclude them from being close to a facility? Or is, are they just women's centers out of luck? I mean, would there be provisions from them? I'm thinking there might be other situations too, like maybe, you know, child care centers. I mean, other areas other Quality. than. Yeah, we. What? Okay, tell me. It says, it said that take daycare has to be taken into consideration, although I don't know if it was on the map. If you look at uh, the definition in the proposed ordinance of school, which is, uh, here, you've got it on? Yeah. Uh, so the, the state law that was adopted says, the property where the proposed establishment is to be located um, first cannot be in an area zoned exclusively for residential use, uh, and it can't be, uh, it puts a thousand foot buffer, which you can shrink uh, relative to pre-existing public or private schools providing K-12 education. So is and that considered daycare? No, it's not daycare, but that's what we, we use the language of the act. I mean, we're, that's what the act says. You know, it doesn't say anything about churches, doesn't say anything about daycare. I'm not saying you couldn't try and put that in, but you know, we know what the act said too what you can and can't do. Okay. And I and it's very gray as we discussed in the work session. It's because this became about through an initiative, there are things that are not clear. Right. Plus we don't have the final rules, so anything could change. Mayor Pro Tem. Okay. Um, as far as the map into Dave's question, I, I do kind of feel for that, but I'm a little nervous that we might be getting into spot zoning. And also I don't think that's us. I think that's gonna be Correct me if I'm wrong, Dennis, but the map kind of issues and those are going to be 
other than the thousand feet, which is what or five hundred feet is what we're doing, but the planning commission will be establishing that. Yeah, that's that's very correct in that we did an analysis based upon the emergency rules and where these facilities would be allowed to locate and most of them are industrial or light industrial some of them may be commercial this is where it hashes out per the emergency rules so the next step the planning commission would take would be to take this map and then the emergency rules and then the guidance from the city commission if the ordinance is adopted and then they would come up with particular standards for each one of these parcels related to these businesses but those standards are again zoning in nature okay how many parking spaces you need to have so on and so forth those type of things um, if the commission desires to have a larger buffer from or have a 500 foot buffer from things other than a um, than a school then this is the time to talk about that okay so that's my only question about the map at the moment if anyone else I'll go back to my other issues commissioners further comments your honor Attorney? just say uh, tonight we really don't have to get into zoning we just need to know the types of establishments the Commission is interested in the having in the ordinance and the number of each uh, the only other thing as Dennis said the buffering requirements based on the statute we, we just took those two buffering requirements one is the minimum distance from a school we put 500 if you want to make it a thousand or any other number you can do that and we also put in language that it, establishments shall not be located within an area ex zoned exclusively for residential use both are right out of the the act the other th zoning things that you are going to be dealing with later are the things Dennis is talking about once the that the Planning Commission will be dealing with even before you do May pro tem okay now with that I have a couple of follow-up questions with the actual ordinance before I talk about numbers or we talk about numbers if we like the numbers etc uh, just so I understand the process correct um, Ron so after let's say we adopt this ordinance end of October there's the 10 days after the 10 days I had Sean explain this to me a little bit earlier the 10 days we would have a 30 day like competitive bidding kind of thing or people would come and fill out an application and within those 30 days we'd review those applications and determine from there who's fit for licenses is that did I understand that say that right Sean I might have got my words a little bit screwy go ahead if you can answer that yeah, so the actual time frame isn't set up, but it would be after the ordinance takes place, uh, takes effect at the end of December. Um, I believe the commission can set how long they would like that initial period of accepting applications to be. Um, but we also realize the process will probably start with the state, going to the state, making an application, get a pre-qualification from the state, and then bring it to the city and say look I've yeah but we'll we'll yeah. have that when their application yeah. they're going to bring us that forward okay and, and the state isn't going to start accepting any applications until November 1 okay so I that's fine ish I, I don't love it a whole bunch of going in that process I kind of prefer a first comfort first serve basis um, that's just with the ordinance itself and that's why I'm just bringing it up now because I don't want to come to the next meeting and it, an issue I don't know if that's an option or if anyone else is interested in that kind of system well let me just say this too: the the statute is pretty clear about the city setting up a competitive process okay it's required in the law okay so it's not something we've dreamed up I mean I we just thought maybe it, you thought it was a, yeah no, we okay. have to if we have let's say three establishments or five establishments in a particular type and more people apply then we have to under that act have a competitive process which is what we try to set up in the in the ordinance okay those are my questions with the actual ordinance um, I'll let other people talk about numbers before I get into it <coughs> sorry Commissioner Smith I just wanted to um, say to Miss Sullivan that you may want to look at attending a planning commission meeting because it looks like that's probably your next best step before we get too far down the road on these other things something definitely worth bringing up for the future um, 
So as far as the numbers go, do you mind bringing up that slide? Do we have it or no, we're not doing it. Thank you. So I see the staff recommendation, as I said in the work session last week, and as I will continue to say, I am in favor of not setting limits and letting the market and zoning dictate um, how this will go as a city. That being said, in good faith, I'm willing to compromise. So I'd like to hear what the other commissioners have to say. Commissioner Hill. So uh, one of the obvious comparisons is to liquor establishments and how liquor licenses are allocated, which I do not claim to understand at this moment. Um, and so, but I understand that there is a limited number. I don't think we make the bars compete with each other. Um, but so how does that work now? Um, I did, when this all was getting started, um, I believe we had 15 liquor licenses for the, uh, I'm, I can look it up. Um, I had someone look it up for me. Um, uh, and we actually have more bar liquor licenses than we are necessarily would normally a city of our size would have. That I do remember. Um, and then there's temporary licenses that sit with the Downtown Development Authority, um, and the number was over 100. Um, and that had not, there's a variety of different kinds of liquor licenses, temporary like Beer Fest, but then also things like what's at the hotels, what's at restaurants, things like that. Um, so those numbers are much bigger than the numbers we're talking about here, and I wondered if anyone could speak to that. I don't know if there's a correlation or not. I know that it's very difficult to get a liquor license. I mean, the rigorous either at the state and local level, but I don't know that, I, I really can't tell you there's a correlation or I've read anything that suggests that we ought to have the same number, we shouldn't have the same number. I, I was actually speaking more to the process. Like, oh. so, I mean, my sense is that the market, people bid and buy them from each other and it's right. the government's not involved. Right, I mean, if you've got a liquor license for sale, there's usually someone who's willing to buy it. But not with this. This these licenses are not transferable, and they're one-year licenses. Okay. So, well, that's helpful to understand. Yeah, I was just going to say, from our standpoint, uh, I don't. I'm not going to claim to understand all the intricacies of liquor licenses, but the the DDA has a special designation where you can uh, establish a facility, a bar in the DDA, and purchase a license uh, for a set fee. When you leave, the license disappears, basically. Um, beyond that, the boundaries of the DDA, there is essentially a set number in Marquette County that uh, I don't know how it was allotted to begin with, but they're all owned. So if you want to open a bar in Marquette County, you have to find someone that is holding a liquor license and willing to sell it for you for whatever price you can reach. So if you look at the list, the list is publicly available on the state website. Uh, there are several on there of uh, businesses that are no longer uh, in operation because it's owner is holding a liquor license and waiting for a, a suitor, I guess. But the reason it's not, just to be clear, the um, that's something that someone buys and owns. This is something that's only good for 12 months. And of course, in these first 12 months until the end of 2021, you have to already be holding a medical uh, marijuana license before you'll be even eligible. So anyone at this beginning stage, and then it's going to potentially change. And I um, we talked about at the Wednesday work session that this would be, again, something else we would look at on an annual basis as we go through. So this will be our first attempt, and we uh, would certainly, uh, I would anticipate, we'll be uh, revising it. Uh, plus, the state laws will become final, plus there's probably going to be lawsuits to <coughs> help set boundaries on some of this stuff. So um, just to put all that out there as well. And in terms of numbers, to answer your question, um, I am also leaning towards having the market decide. I, um, I think in the zoning, I mean, it's already <coughs> fairly tight. And in areas of town where we have decided that we want to have commercial establishments, and that's what we um, ha uh, went through the land development code process, the master plan process. So I am um, comfortable um, Looking at that, and that said, I could be open to conversation, but it does seem like we we have a process in place to to identify where we want commercial establishments, and that's where these would go, for the most for the most part. If I may, put that. All right, numbers. I don't hate them; they're not terrible. Um, I do have. 
I would be more inclined to be agreeable and compromise because I'm also on the same boat as um, Jen, Commissioner Hill and Commissioner Smith that I think that the market would dictate this. I think zoning shows where, where they would go and just like any other business that opens in town, you just get to plop it there. Um, but I do want to make this get started and I, I think that our, the public wants it to happen in general. So the only one, the only two that I take real issue with or wish if anybody would be willing to discuss on the numbers is a temporary marijuana permit. I would like that to not be zero or one. Um, I think that that's actually what people have told us. I think our residents have asked for like, you know, some kind of event that includes marijuana. I also think the marijuana retailer cannot be five. I think it has to be higher than five. I think 10 is probably the least I'll go down. Other than that, those are the only two that I take, I think need to be a little bit adjusted. And, and when we're talking temporary marijuana permit, I'm not necessarily saying unlimited, but at least like we should have one or two in a trial kind of period, not zero. True for, yeah, true for dare here, I guess. Um, <laughs> Other commissioners, any comments? Commissioner Frazier? It's all interesting. I'm waiting for the state plan. You know what they're finalizing? We're making provisions for if it is going to be low, but I think, I mean, people compare it to, to beer establishments and bars. I mean, it's a good, it's a good, it's a different businesses. You know, it was a legal product, just like liquor is liquor, was it legal a long time ago? Became legal, and everybody does it differently. I mean, there's, if you wanted to open a bar right now, there's rules that says, okay, fill out this application, do this, do this, this, and you know, here's what you're gonna do. Simple as that. If you open up, <coughs> want to open a, say, if I want to open a pot store, well, these are the rules we think you should follow. I think you gotta follow these rules, maybe these rules, and don't do this, don't do this. I'm like, so there's no real set rules yet from the state. That's what I've talked to many police people and they, law enforcement people, they said, you know, it's okay if it happens, but we don't know how to regulate it. We don't know what to do with this, you know? And other people I've talked to, medical professionals were not, I mean, medical marijuana is one thing, but medical department was not in favor of it, you know? Just my two cents and, I mean, I think a lot of it's still gray area about, okay, where can we do it, where can't we do it? And like I heard from, you know, Shopko area and Market Mall about the only places that are, could be doing something, but then you're next to hotels and, you know, shop off is the only place you could do something, but, I mean, then you worry about, okay, what's next to it, what's this, what's this, you know, and, like, well, there's a, you know, medical facility that does rehab right behind Shopco, the old GT Shaft, and there's, you know, not really next to Office Max, you got, you know, Gilbert Ice Cream, not much far, but I guess there's so many gray areas that are just not, like to wait and see what happens to the state level, the state level will figure everything out before we have to, okay, say that we do this or this. When the state gets the rules in session, that's why I'd be in favor of doing it. Because Commissioner Campana. As we look at the numbers, I mean, we were given recommended numbers from city staff, and I'd be fine with those numbers I mean, we're just throwing a dart here, so it really doesn't matter that much. As was pointed out to me earlier, I don't know why you'd want, why a grower, processor, or tester would even want to be in the city, price of property being steeper in the city than it is in the surrounding townships. I mean, if you're gonna grow, why don't you go out in the, you know, wilds where it's, you know, uh, land is cheap, you can put a building up cheap you know, as opposed to doing it in Marquette. So I don't think that's gonna be a problem. You know, you could say two, three, five, ten. I, I, I just don't believe they're gonna do that in the city. If I was gonna put one up, I wouldn't, you know, I'm looking for the cheapest place to do it. So that's out of the city. Uh, the only thing I can see that's gonna be in the city is gonna be questionable would be the uh, um, pot shops, um, the retail shops. I don't believe we have a recommended quantity of five or 10, up to 10. I can't picture 10 stores making it in the city. I just can't. Um, I mean, if that's what the commission wants, I'll vote for it, but uh, I just don't see that many uh, market uh, competition will keep it down. So I think uh, what we have here recommended by the city staff to me would be fine. Any other commissioner? Commissioner Schlegel. 
Thank you, Your Honor. Um, geez, Dave, we, we agree. Uh, I, I have to go along with what you just said there. I mean, I don't think that we need to put any limits on, I mean, quite honestly, with, with any of the, uh, the Class A, B, or C growers because I just don't see it happen. Um, I, I just, I don't. Uh, I don't think we need to worry about excess marijuana grower. I'd say zero there. Um, processor, retailer, and, and I guess, y here's the deal, I'm, I'm a bit more conservative on this. Um, I, I want it to be allowed, but I don't want a lot of them around, quite honestly. Uh, and we can say 10, we can say five retailers uh, or micro business, whatever. But again, business is gonna dictate, you know, who's gonna be left at the end of the day. So uh, a conversation with a friend of mine said, you know, there's probably gonna be one really nice one that all the cool people that wanna come and visit Marquette go and visit. And it's gonna be like walking into Studio 51. And then you're gonna have this other one that's kinda like where the locals go because they wanna go to that. And I thought, you know, business is gonna dictate what's gonna happen. Um, I really wanna put, I wanted to put limits on this really bad, I did. But I just can't do it uh, and then come back in a year and say, here's where we need to go uh, with this in the new direction after what we found. So I'm gonna go with, uh, if I was gonna put limits on it, I'd say I don't wanna see A, B, or C in the city of Marquette as far as the, uh, the marijuana growers. But that's just my, uh, my, my personal opinion there. And I can go uh, be very flexible in the other areas knowing that, uh, th that we're gonna be able to review this. I like the living documents, the living process that we've kind of adopted over the last few years in the city of Marquette so that we can review things regularly and keep them current. Um, and I do have a feeling uh, that we're gonna see further regulations come through from the state that are gonna even further con downsize these, uh, these other options as we move forward. So that's my four cents. Vice Commissioner Smith. Mr. Mayor, could I make a motion, please? Or would you like to make comments? Oh, I thought. Um, I, I think a motion. A We're not doing a motion tonight? We can make a motion. Oh, Absolutely, we can. Motion? Would you, would you prefer to comment before I do that? Yes, okay. if I can. Let me just, uh, as the last speaker here, I think, make a comment. I can support what staff has written. Um, I think some things are a little bit high. I don't think you're going to see a grow operation in the city because the land is too cheap outside of the city. And uh, to me, it, you're going to follow where the best money is for the operation. So I don't think that's going to happen in the city. I think politically, and this is an important component of all of it, is that I think while we have a lot of folks that, that want this to happen, and we have a lot of folks that want it to happen without any limits, we also have folks that are not comfortable with it happening, but I think will accept it if they see some limits on it. And whether those limits turn out to be real, because the market's gonna find out where it is anyway, or whether it becomes just a matter of good policy, we can, we can talk about. But in the end game, the market's gonna determine how many you have of what and where they are it, to some extent. So I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I'm also comfortable, certainly, that we arrived at this consensus I believe we have through a process of really uh, uh, compromise, of people giving up a little bit and people taking a little bit, and that's the way government works, should work. It always should, and you might look at Lansing and say, boy, there's not much compromise going on down there, and you're right, that's a whole toxic environment. But this commission, I think, has clearly demonstrated that ability to compromise on difficult issues like this. So I certainly can vote for the measure as presented. I think it's presented. Commissioner Smith, the uh, table is yours. I agree with everything you just said, Mayor Stonehouse. Um, the motion I was gonna make after hearing the comments was to, um, I move that we move forward with no limits on any of the categories. No limits on any category. Correct. Do we have a second on no limits? We have a second with Mayor Pro Tem. I'll second. Any further discussion on no limits? 
Okay, all those. Yeah, uh, can I, no, uh, yeah I don't want to. Wait a minute. Yes, we have to go back to the motion, motion maker. Any further comments? No, sir. Um, the only comment is that I appreciate making that motion. I don't know if it's going to pass, Jenna, but then after that we can go back and <laughs> go try again if, if not. Yeah, that was I. Commissioner Hill. Um, uh, as it might be, well, we go back to the what's on the, the piece of paper. There's some, um, I think, uh, I think I could, I guess I want to, I, I ask the, the, your, your in, in making that motion, what you're seeking to accomplish is to let the market decide and the zoning decide. Like that's sort of baked into what you're saying. Correct. Uh, you know, the other piece of the puzzle that we haven't really talked about is the competitive bidding pr or the competitive process. Um, if we leave it wide open, we don't have to get involved in the competitive process and, and kind of play favorites that way. So it eliminates that piece of the puzzle for staff and the commission moving forward. And if I can, I build on that. Um, that would be it's the staff time around managing the competitive process that I'm also very concerned about. That we would now get involved in vetting these organizations when there's a whole state regulatory process that's going to be doing that. And I don't think that we need um, our, our staff time at the local level to be devoted to that. I'm concerned about that being a big drain on our potentially on our resources. And I'm also concerned on the um, temporary marijuana that if we're only going to, again, if we are going to say maybe start out with one, how are we going to decide that? Um, who's going to get to do that? Um, is it going to be because it goes the most money to charity or is it going to be because you know I I'm I'm very concerned how that would play out as well so I I can lean towards having no limits as a as a one factor being the staff time um, question okay we have a motion on the floor and the motion is to have effectively no limits correct so all those uh, commissioners in favor of the motion, please signify by saying yes. 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 Uh, I need a count on that. One, two, three, four. All those commissioners opposed, signify by saying no. 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 And that gives us a four to three, no limits. Discussion is done. That brings us down to public comments. Good evening. My name is Casey Honeyager from out on the West Tension Republic again. My only question for the council, if one of the commissioners can answer it during their time at all, are we going to be looking at medical anytime? Medical marijuana also. So that's the main question I have. We're looking at rack, rack, rack. Well, us licensees have to be pre approved and have our medical licenses, or we have to wait until November 20th of 2020 in order to get our licenses. So that is a big question that I have for the commission if they're uh, looking at medical. So thank you. Anyone else? Public comment. My only question is on the stacking of licenses. Yeah. For instance, if somebody wants to come in and do the shop co and you don't. Can leave you please it give open. your name, sir? Randy Ardeby. I'm you have sorry. To say it every time. I'm sorry, you have to say it every time. <laughs> Randy Ardeby. If, for instance, somebody wants to develop into the Shopco building, you don't want to restrict them on their numbers if they can't grow enough to support the, the building and the structure and the business at Shopco by not leaving. But as you voted, there's no limits on any of it, correct? You could, so that's open, then we don't have to worry about which licenses are which. So far. Thank you much. Anyone else? Frank Chavarito, these are my opinions. August 26, Mr. Stonehouse criticized me for saying our three minutes are mandated. This board mandated the three minutes. There isn't the time or necessity to expound in such trivialities as if I wouldn't know that after 21 years. He's desperate if he feels the need to nitpick to that extent. He has no other straw left to grab. Mr. Fraser pressed the repeat button on his tape recorder again. All of that was addressed August 12th in his absence. He had no business attending on August 26th unless he'd reviewed our entire previous meeting. His repeating is so contagious, he's got me repeating. 
Again, there are managers I've gotten along with. Of course, no one agrees with everything anyone says over the course of years. Married, most married couples can't go a month. Quoting from August 12th, I admired Mr. Vita and wish he'd never left. Another ex-manager and I exchanged Christmas cards each year with short letters, end quote. I'll show him if you won't believe me. To Mr. Vita, I say, please come back. He won't, because toward the end, the memo he published about founders read more like something I'd write. Mr. Fraser went on to say for the third time that if I want to make a difference, run for an open seat. His advice is bogus. Ms. Compenzi is the best example. She cast the dissenting vote many times. The best member we've ever had was allowed to make little difference. Despite her tactful manner, this board subtly treated her like an outcast. She went on to prove that UP residents favored her one vote over six politically motivated ones. Judging from the subversive measures that members use to criticize me, I'm having a greater impact here than I could with a descending vote and without having only three days to read 300 page packets. Mr. Fraser has yet to respond to why he thought I'd mentioned me moving the fence along the rocks at Lighthouse Park when the record shows I'd referred only to the Northwest fence eight times. He's not com comprehending what's being said. How do unrelated people allege that Museum Drive is a conflict of interest? Note how every inch south of the lighthouse benefits the museum, except for the trail, which is nice. What's left, though, is an eyesore compared to what we had. August 26, when I gasped in the audience that Mr. Campanism is truth, Mr. Stonehouse asked I give them the same respect they give me. Just one meeting earlier, they'd interrupted me without cause. I mean, how short a memory does he have? They are due no respect from a public standpoint. Regarding the four men on this board, let us review the record to determine whose accounts are more reliable. It'd be like playing chess with five-year-olds. They've been told repeatedly how to get rid of me. Instead of manipulating my comments to their advantage, address the specifics to show that I'm generally wrong. I'll apologize profusely and quit speaking at this venue. Anyone else to address the commission? Margaret Brum, 404 East Magnetic Street. I'm here to announce that there will be a public presentation on the history of Cliff Dow Industries on Saturday, September 28th from 1 to 3 p.m. in the Peter White Public Library. It'll be open to anyone who wants to come. Children 10 and above are welcome. Um, I'm the presenter at this presentation. I went looking for a history of Cliff Dow we have so many histories and so many historians in this city, and much to my surprise, I could not find that anyone had compiled a history of the Cliftow manufacturing site uh, either before Cliftow was created, during Cliftow manufacturing, or the 50 years since Cliftow was, was shut down. So um, I took it upon myself to put together some uh, history, some facts, some Freedom of Information Act requests, a lot of correspondence back and forth between various people, various parts of the city, various parts of Northern, various parts of um, the government. And what I'm trying to do in this two hour presentation, and I don't think I'll be talking for a full two hours, is give people who are not familiar with Cliftow, along from the name Cliftow, what it was, uh, what it meant, and what its impact upon the city had been and continues to be. And I, I think this is useful information uh, from a historical sp perspective, but I also think it's vitally important information from a future decision-making perspective because um, one of the documents that I've, I've been reading for the last week um, specifically makes the point that some uh, 50 years after the site has been shut down, uh, various aspects of the manufacturing process are still being detectable. And this is the sort of thing where you think after 50 years uh, it would have all gone away, and it simply hasn't. So to sum up, um, Saturday, September 28th, from 1 until 3 p.m., I'll be presenting. Uh, also, if any of you uh, have any historical records of Cliff Stowell, pictures, family stories, family anecdotes, anything related to the site, please contact me. Uh, the more uh, human stories I can get, the less I'll be quoting from documents. And I've already gotten a few um, good discussions going. 
So uh, I welcome everyone's attention. And because I know the members of the City Commission can't all be in the same place at the same time or violating the Open Rules Act, I'm going to repeat it at the end of October. So if you want to come, you can come to one or the other without violating the Open Meetings Act. Um, thank you very much for your time. Anyone else? Public comment is closed. That brings us to comments from commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Smith, if you would lead, please. Well, we accomplished a lot tonight. We got the budget passed. Um, we dealt with marijuana, at least a piece of it for now. And um, some other unfinished business, but we just keep plugging along. There's a lot of bucket list items that we've been chipping away at over the years, and um, it's good to see some action. That's all. Commissioner Schlegel. Thank you. Um, yeah, good to see something moving on the uh, on the marijuana legislation or the uh, rules and regulations for the city of Marquette. Um, it's early, you know. There's going to be plenty of time for things to uh, manifest in different directions, and you know, I think that by taking an open-minded approach to this is going to be uh, the right direction that's going to lead us uh, uh, to the best resolve. I think so. We'll see how this pans out. Um, I'm always open for input from anybody that wants to uh, have a conversation about it and uh, appreciate people on both sides of the fence coming in and being a part of the discussion so, so far. Um, I would like to say that this was the, probably the best beer fest I've been to this past weekend. I want to thank the City of Marquette Police Department and the Brewers Guild for their amazing presence as far as security goes down there. Um, very few instances for what I've heard as far as uh, issues with people taking it a little bit too far and the ones that were but I only saw one and it was handled right away um, so you know in order to have an event like that or anything that might be related to anything else we're talking about tonight in the future I think it's really important that you know it's well organized and they've done a fabulous job over the years of, uh, of bringing that event to us and bringing a lot of people into our community so that was a lot of fun uh, that's about it. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Campana. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the marijuana question, I think that um, those issues are going to settle out. Um, they shouldn't be any more controversial probably than short-term rentals were for us. So hopefully, uh, you know, it, it's a non-talkable thing. A couple other things. Uh, Wednesday, the 18th, household hazardous waste collection will be done at um, Fling Farm on Pioneer Road. Thursday, the 19th, music on 3rd. Hmm. On Thursday, the 12th, Mauna Lang retirement party. Mauna, who has contributed so much, so hard for the city, for so many years, has done an outstanding job. We'll be retiring from the DDA. Um, what else? Wednesday, 9-11. Let us not forget that day. And finally, uh, your taxes are due Saturday the 14th. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure, Commissioner Gary, I'm sure Gary loves that. You said Gary loves the fact that taxes are due. That's his favorite time of year. He loves taxes. It's just his favorite part of the city. He likes the money coming in. Doesn't like the money going out, but he likes the money coming in. Um, Mr. Virgil loves to come in on our mayor writing down notes or something like that during a meeting, but he's running a meeting for the city and doing a great job. And that's why he's writing stuff down. He's not just sitting in the back looking at what everything is doing, just complimenting everything, he's just look, just doing his job. And Mr. Virgil talked about 20 years, well for 20 years, he's been commenting about everything wrong, every commissioner's doing, every mayor's doing, managers, everybody's doing, and we've asked him before, you know, you can run if you want, Frank, and see if you want to do something. He's just openly says no, he won't, but he's, he doesn't really, Every single of his comments doesn't apply to anything that's going on in the city. Other people talk about, okay, marijuana is a big issue. People talk about that. Talk about where to do it, where to do it. That's an issue in the city. A lot of stuff comes up. Okay, I have a problem with the city. This is going on. But Mr. Barrow loves to comment on everything that a commissioner does wrong. 
Commissioner, Mayor, he just he focuses all his attention on what everybody's doing wrong. Not him, he complains about everything. Everybody, and Sarah Kamidze was a great commissioner, but she left us and decided to run for the state. She's doing a great job at the state. We're hearing a lot of good comments about that. And again, but it's there's seven of us here, including the mayor, and like you saw with the marijuana thing, it takes four people, four people to win a vote. Everybody decides differently. You know, one person makes a difference. You can get your voice heard. Doesn't mean it's gonna get a top, but one person can make a difference, can can you know tell everybody what, what they feel, but doesn't mean it's gonna make a difference. But in this case, four people felt like they wanted to make a difference and they made a difference. It's good for them. Good to see it going through. The state's figuring to get their figures figured out, but so the state gets figured out, we'll we'll have like microbrewers when, you know, everything is compared to beers. Microbrews started going, it was just a few people going, and now it's huge business. I foresee, you know, the pop business getting bigger like that sometime eventually. It'd be the same thing, you know. I don't know, but we'll see. And there's no medical people I've talked to say, oh, there's nothing wrong with it compared to beer. No, I think you heard lots of good things about the marijuana issue, but then I've had doctors tell me, you know, people that smoke it can cut, get lung cancer. I further from it, I said, really? I said, well, it's just a natural product. He said, it's the smoke that harms you. Any kind of smoke, right? The cigarette smoke, marijuana smoke, any kind of smoke you're dealing with can cause cancer. That's what I've heard. And an interesting story online today about a kid's school getting candy that was, you know, induced with their marijuana, got burnt into school, and kids would go to the hospital to get treated for it just in case. You know, you don't see beer getting burnt into school and kids drinking alcohol. Just one thing to think about and we'll see what happens. And yes, like uh, Paul Seigel said, it was a good beer fest. It stopped out at the end, great things going on, a lot of happy people, amazing on people come from everywhere to go to that thing. And town was hopping, all the restaurants benefited from everything. It was a great, great event. And they had their security down there in full force. Even the Coast Guard was down there. Everything was in full force. And we're good. There's no big reports of any industry. So it was great. And for another event next year, next year, maybe. I have three events I want to highlight coming up before our next uh, city commission meeting on September 30th. And I also want to ask staff, uh, what is the next date? If you could just put us uh, put it out there one more time. The next in this marijuana conversation, the next step is planning commission. I, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe this is a good time just to remind the public. This is important that uh, really the no ordinance has been adopted. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all we did tonight was try to complete a draft ordinance that had left we had a gap in. We needed to know the number of establishments and the types of establishments that we should put into our draft ordinance. On October 15th, there will be a public hearing in which all of the provisions of the draft ordinance will, will be open uh, and will be available to the public to discuss and challenge and do whatever they want to do. But all we did tonight was decide how we're going to complete this draft. It will be finalized and it will be attached to the notice that we have to do to give the public notice of the upcoming public hearing and that notice will be with the agenda on uh, the 30th of, that's our next meeting, right? September 30? Yes. So that notice uh, scheduling the public hearing for the 15th of October will be, will be uh, approved at that meeting on the 30th of September and attached to that notice will be the final draft as we have it. Then on the 15th, the public will get a shot at it. It'll be a public hearing and the entire ordinance, including a number of establishments and the types of establishments, everything is open for discussion. Nothing's been approved tonight other than we've been given direction as to what to put into this ordinance, our draft. Thank you very much. Um, the three events are um, this Saturday is both uh, Pride Fest, a UP Pride Fest happening from noon to 10 p.m. at Tourist Park, and a new event called the Crop Swap. Um, I know I have more zucchini than I can eat and cucumbers um, that uh, I have too many of. So you're invited to come to Graverett Elementary to the um, uh, space behind the school there and come uh, 
meet, meet fellow gardeners and share some uh, vegetables, is what we're sharing there. Um, and uh, th that's being put on by um, groups that are propo promoting sustainability and growing your own food in Marquette and the UP. Um, and then coming up on September 26th, um, which also happens to be my birthday, uh, is um, cupcakes are invited, but um, is the opening of Lighthouse Park. And we're gonna have a ribbon cutting for Lighthouse Park at 11 a.m. on, that's, um, I'm not sure what day of the week that is, but September 26th. And then also you may have seen, um, the construction has started at Prescott <laughs> Marina. And so um, there's gonna be work to improve that uh, facility uh, um, that's started this week. Thank you, good work tonight. We did a lot when you think about it. Think how far the city's come on marijuana. How I think everybody's come on it. It's been a long journey and an interesting one. And uh, as as commissioners have talked to it, we've come a long way. Got a long way yet to go. And the, the uh, attorney, I think, spread that out pretty good and explained it so we all understand a little bit better about how that trail is going to take us. And as he indicated, too, every step of the way is transparent. Every step of the way, everybody who wants to be part of it, who is well, the public and the interest from the public, will all be there. Uh, it's, uh, it's got a ways to run yet, at, uh, but a lot certainly accomplished last th tonight. A couple of great events that we had, certainly uh, the Blues Festival just last weekend, or the weekend before last, and then the Beer Fest on this one, fantastic. When you think about a little town like this and being able to put on quality events like that, uh, just, just absolutely remarkable. A tribute not only to the people, but a tribute to the people that come here to see those things. That said, city manager, floor is yours. Thank you. Um, first, I'll just put it out there that if uh, if the commission wants to somehow deal with medical marijuana, we can certainly do that into the future. But I think we need to be directed by the commission. I would suggest, however, that you, I know it might not work for the people out here, but if we could get through this recreational one first and then we can deal with the medical later um, but again I'd like to be directed to, to go in that direction because up until this point the uh, emphasis has been not to opt in a uh, couple comments uh, uh, I want to thank Dennis and Sean for their good work on the uh, economic development plan and the public participation plan uh, especially Sean, who spent a considerable amount of time uh, doing this, and I will say probably did a, a, as good a job as, as anybody in, in, that, in that area. Uh, I have open office hours this Wednesday, 10 o'clock, uh, at the uh, Peter White Public Library. I'd like to mention that the kiln project is underway on South Lake Street. Um, I, I, I haven't been there myself, but I have to imagine it'd be like watching someone assemble a puzzle that really you have no idea how it fits, but I'm being told it can be done. And then lastly, I want to uh, uh, thank the uh, and recognize the, the Beautification Committee for their efforts on the uh, graffiti cleanup in the city. They've uh, pretty much taken it upon themselves to, to go after this problem. Uh, identify areas in the city through the police department that have been damaged through uh, graffiti. They are working closely with the public works department in uh, cleaning this up and make sure it's done correctly and not damaging anything in the process. Uh, that's it, thank you.